uh, we are ready for uh, John, who's going to, like I said, uh, be talking to us about building and testing database extensions with Nix. Uh, where's your mic? There you go. Give him a round of applause, please. Hello. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, uh, this is kind of a presentation about how I've been using Nix at work. Uh, it's not really um, recommendations, I guess, more of a description of what I've done, maybe um, things that I think could uh, improve or um, from my side or from uh, maybe things I could contribute to Nix packages um, and uh, just sort of a perspective from that um, angle. Um, I've been using Nix for probably about a year and a half. I initially started it for uh, this project, uh, which is something I'll describe in the talk. Um, and I've switched to using it as uh, NixOS is my main operating system of choice for work and home. Um, generally pretty proud of it, or pleased with it. Um, so uh, let's just begin the talk. Um, so I'm just going to describe. Uh, I have um, a couple of Postgres extensions and a Redis extension uh, that I build and maintain as part of my job. Um, and uh, I'm just going to cover how that's uh, done. Uh, and as I said, it's more of a description than a prescription. Uh, maybe there are some good ideas, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so background on uh, database extensions, um, particularly in the uh, context of Postgres. Um, they've been around since about 9.1, well, exactly since 9.1. Um, and they're actually pretty flexible in what you can do. Uh, Postgres has always had um, the ability to, for custom types, and that was its original uh, uh, selling point, but um, extensions can load in complicated uh, functionalities that you might want to have in your database. Um, some examples, uh, Citus or PostGIS, TimescaleDB. DB. Um, po uh, Citus is sort of a uh, <laughs> distributed um, database product. It, um, the private company that does a SaaS product based on it, um, but you're kind of a bit wild when it comes to changing what Postgres actually does. Uh, PostGIS is for geographical data. Um, if you want to have a whole bunch of locations and uh, find out a query on which locations are in a certain area, you can do really cool stuff with that. And TimescaleDB turns Postgres into a time series database, um, which are, and as, I mean, these are pretty radical departures from uh, what you would usually do, but um, still it, within the Postgres framework and with the Postgres protocol and use SQL. Uh, so quite handy for a development perspective. Uh, there is a caveat, though, if you're going to write an extension. Um, they only work with the uh, major release that you compile against them. Um, <laughs> this is uh, quite handy for making sure everything is compatible when you deploy it, but uh, say you want to update your database, you need to make sure your extension is the correct version, otherwise they won't load. Um, so we were uh, developing um, MySQL uh, UDF, which works on a very similar kind of uh, system. And um, <laughs> basically, uh, one of my coworkers didn't really uh, understand how I'd lay laid out the project. Uh, we were deploying into a Docker file, and the Docker file had the major v release of a uh, particular MySQL version. Uh, he updated the build dependencies, and um, it just meant that, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you forget to uh, match the versions, uh, it's just not going to work. And it's going to be difficult to figure out exactly why it doesn't work uh, until you actually try and uh, use the image. Uh, so he'd heard about Nix. So uh, he was like, well, why don't we try that? Um, and we did. <laughs> uh, so here's kind of uh, how um, <laughs> my workflow would work uh, before I started using Nix. Um, have to. Uh, Still, the dev package with Ubuntu uh, package manager or apt or something. Um, install my other dependencies, build the project locally, um, build a Docker image with that output matching the right uh, server version, and then start it as a local container, and then run all my tests against the servers. Um, it's nice. Uh, it's a lot of steps to remember how to do. Um, if you want to. Um, Maybe write a bash script that does all this. It's nice. Um, problem is, if I want to intervene in something or uh, do something differently, 
it's a bit more complicated. Um, if I want to run, run benchmarks instead of the regular tests, if I want to run a specific test, um, or uh, if, <laughs> yeah, if I want to just connect to a, the database itself. I could just write a complicated bash script, but I'm really lazy. So <laughs> can I just push it to my CI pipeline that I've got? Because we're hip and trendy. Uh, yeah, OK, but now <laughs> it's got to download the dependencies, wait for the extension to build, wait for the Docker image to build, wait for the Docker image to be uploaded to the registry. Uh, it's got to pull the image again, start it as a service, and then I've got to wait for my test to fail to find out that something's gone wrong. Um, this is just motivated by my laziness. So, <laughs> let's say I want to update which um, major release I'm using for my uh, base database. Uh, I've got to update the documentation. <laughs> got to get a new uh, Docker image. Got to update my uh, local packages, and I've got to update the remote build environment. <laughs> uh, so, okay, digression into. Uh, how Postgres works. <laughs> um, I'm just going to talk briefly about how it stops you from loading uh, modules that aren't compatible. And that's called PG module magic, uh, which I like to think of as a hashtag rather than a, a macro. Um, <laughs> so essentially, there's a magic struct that it uses. Um, you just add if and def uh, PG module magic, uh, add it to your uh, build, uh, sorry, to your C extension. Um, and Basically, this just stops you from uh, loading your extension dynamically. So this is what the, the magic struct looks like if you're interested. Uh, <laughs> so if you were wanted to build something usually uh, for the Postgres extension system, they provide pgxs, um, which uh, is kind of just a, a big make file thing include that you can add. Um, and it uh, will pull some module definitions and um, basically use that to uh, hide a lot of the complexity from you. Um, this is an example from the documentation for Postgres. Uh, it basically, it's um, definition of the uh, header and uh, C file where you've got your uh, uh, code for your extension, uh, some version SQL for telling you how to load and uh, unload the module. Um, and then this tool called pgconfig, which basically tells you how Postgres was set up. Uh, and then this is an example of what the SQL might look like. Um, so it's just a make file. Uh, turns out Nix Packages is very good at handling, handling make files. Um, so it's actually a pretty easy win. <laughs> uh, if you want to add an extra dependency, you can just use the LD flags. Uh, you can customize things with the C flags. Bit of a pain with um, pgconfig, though. I'll show you why. Um, essentially, pgconfig will um, have a bunch of C flags from when Postgres is compiled, um, and LD flags as well, and share them. Uh, so when I am building an extension, um, I'll do this kind of bad practice thing where uh, I'm adding the LD flags here. Um, I have, since writing this, had a better idea about how I could do this, but um, essentially, you just have to add a pre-configure phase, and you can integrate directly with uh, PGXS because uh, it seems to work pretty well that way. Uh, so let's say you wanted a um, standard make derivation for uh, Postgres extension, uh, and you've got XX hash. Pretty straightforward. Uh, everyone here is familiar with Nix. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Uh, and same pre-configure stuff. Um, so Let's look at um, extensions and Nix packages. Uh, there's actually quite a few already. Um, I was not super familiar with where they were or um, how to discover them. I knew PostGIS was there, but it's kind of in its own um, uh, libraries directory, whereas these are in the Postgres directory. Um, so I, I think maybe uh, discoverability for something like that could be discovered, uh, could be improved a bit more. Um, but uh, the um, NixOS Postgres module uh, can just have these added to it, and uh, it works, which is something I would want for my extension as well. But I'm not really sure how you do that, because how does Postgres find my extension? Um, so yeah, how do we uh, how do we use it? Well, I just tried to copy the way NixOS does it. 
Um, if you look into uh, the ways that NixOS um, loads extensions, um, basically just has a uh, thing that checks if you've asked for any extra plugins to be enabled. And if you have, just adds them into some paths and symlinks them into the uh, um, build output. But it needs to do a bit of extra stuff with um, uh, post build wrapping to um, basically just set this Nix uh, PG libdir, um, which, uh, yeah, it, it turns out is quite important. Um, basically, Postgres will look in a couple of places for um, where your extensions might be, and it's not. Um, uh, it's not in the Nix store, so <laughs> uh, you need to give it a bit more advice on uh, where that would be. So that's, I think, is why Nix PG libdir is set, um, which comes from a patch that's made to Postgres um, when it's built. Um, so this is where that comes from. Uh, so that wrapper will allow you to uh, provide the libdir um, to find your extensions. Uh, so can we just set it to our um, the build output from our uh, extensions and uh, we're good to go, right? Well, not quite, because there are some extensions from Postgres that you might want to use anyway. Uh, so that's why you need to take the same approach and um, wrap it as well. Um, here, I've pretty much copied the same thing. A uh, very similar idea. Uh, I'm just calling a package with some extensions in. Um, just some more, some more paths. Uh, but I've also um, exposed in it to be in CreateDB. Uh, we'll see why in a moment, because I'm using them to test. Um, but yeah, this just defines my custom Postgres. Uh, and I'm using a particular package from Nix packages there. I, I don't know if uh, this is clear. OK. Um, there'll be plenty of time for questions, hopefully. <laughs> so uh, I can build this package. It's all very nice. Um, what do I uh, do with it? I can uh, probably deploy it somewhere and uh, test it, but um, can I just maybe start it on my system and uh, give it a go? Um, yeah, okay, but then I need to remember to delete that database. I'm still kind of uh, the same place I was initially. Maybe I can add that to my script, but then I've got to manage a whole bunch of other things to uh, control that. Um, Essentially, uh, what I found is um, there's some tools that basically provide you with uh, sort of ephemeral databases that um, it would basically just kick off a database uh, process with an empty database, uh, sorry, uh, empty tables and things. Um, and uh, I'll just use the, there's a few Python packages, for example, that would provide that. So um, I'm using uh, testing.postgres.com. Um, and uh, testing common. Um, and essentially, they are uh, things I provide in Nix Shell. So it, the idea is to um, get a pretty good um, developer ergonomics so that they can just pull up Nix Shell, get all the dependencies um, for the project, and then also um, get what I require for the running the tests as well, uh, and other tooling as well. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I didn't really want to go into too much detail about the uh, Python code that I've written, but um, uh, generally having access to Python here is quite useful. Um, there's a really nice property-based testing uh, library called Hypothesis, which um, you can use to make sure that your encoding and decoding works in the way you'd expect. Um, uh, but generally it seems to be, um, I don't know if many people will use this approach. Uh, I haven't heard a huge amount about it um, with using temporary databases. Uh, there's a tool called pgtemp. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, pgtemp, which um, is like a bash script that will run an instance of Postgres uh, temporarily. Um, and it, it handles some of the cleaning up a bit better than what I've been doing. Um, the, uh, there's also a, a package Pascal as well, I think, called temp Postgres. TMP dash Postgres, um, which will also do a very similar thing. Um, I don't know how uh, common it is to really need that kind of thing unless you're testing an extension. 
Um, most of the time, I think probably unit tests would cover this. The issue is I'm kind of testing how my extension works with Postgres, um, which is perhaps a unique problem space. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I end up using PyTest fixtures for controlling the state of the database, um, which is not very clean and uh, can end up leaking databases, um, which is an interesting problem as well. Uh, if you forget to, or if your script uh, breaks improperly. Um, but uh, with the shells that I've written, um, if you want to just jump in and uh, give, right, run all the tests, run um, a copy of Postgres, run all the SQL commands against it that are required to test the extension. Um, it's essentially two commands, which I can just put in the readme. I don't need to describe how uh, to apt install all the various packages that people usually require. Um, uh, and I think as somewhere where we're not really familiar with functional programming and we don't really, uh, people haven't really gotten bored with the next train, I think um, having something where it's just two commands is really helpful for uh, getting people on board with it. Um, so yeah, uh, cool. Uh, I, I've written this um, uh, expression where I can uh, just define a Postgres um, in installation with the extensions enabled, or in the extensions installed as well. Uh, and what if I want to update it? Previously I had to update Dockerfile, update uh, all these other things. Uh, now I can just change the package from Linux packages. Uh, there are a few problems with this. Um, PGXS has uh, regression tests, um, which are make install check phase, um, which require a running Postgres uh, instance um, to actually uh, test them. They essentially they just a, a script of expected SQL output and some commands, um, and uh, there I haven't really thought of a good way to do that. Um, it would be really nice if um, there is a uh, next packages uh, or make derivation phase for install check, but um, it's not actually a build input. It's sort of a runtime dependency of running the tests. And it would be nice if I could just have my single uh, expression for my um, extension and just be able to run uh, the tests that way on that uh, expression, sorry, in a standalone way, rather than at the moment I kind of bundle up all my extensions and test them together uh, with Postgres. Um, I have no idea how to do that. The other thing is I'm always overriding um, because I want to make sure that the Postgres version I provide to my extensions uh, um, is the same as uh, the one that I built with. Um, I kind of think maybe I should just be, um, make my extensions unable to build without Postgres and kind of curry the expression um, uh, but I haven't seen that pattern very often uh, in Nix packages, so I'm kind of wary of it. Uh, briefly, Redis also has a module system too. It's not very interesting compared to Postgres because uh, Redis modules are responsible for uh, loading, initializing themselves. Uh, they provide all their information about themselves. Uh, they don't have an extension system. You just write a make file, uh, and as long as it has a Redis header, you can load it as a shared object into Redis. Um, I, when I initially submitted the abstract for this talk, I kind of thought there'd be more to it, but. Uh, Unfortunately not, or fortunately, some may, some may say. Um, I haven't seen any examples of Redis modules in Next packages. I think maybe they're quite new. Um, I Maybe I don't know how to discover them. I Certainly with Postgres as well, there was an issue of trying to find the Postgres extensions. Um, I don't know where I would find a Redis module uh, if it existed. I kind of think maybe like Python packages or Haskell packages, there maybe there could be a Redis modules or Postgres extensions uh, attribute set, um, but uh, I don't really know much about that. Uh, so yeah, similarly, really simple derivation. This is like basically the most der simple derivation you can get. Bam, you've got a Redis extension. Uh, and there's also testing Redis, like testing Postgres, so I can reuse all of my testing infrastructure for Redis as well, which is nice. Uh, small caveat, uh, when you have your shell next, you need a small shell hook to export your Redis modules path to your uh, expression full of Redis modules. Um, just thought maybe that might be an interesting little trick to share. Um, and now we're going to talk about Docker. It's inevitable. Um, 
the uh, people uh, who I work with are very keen for everything to end up in a Docker container. So uh, I have to somehow get my extensions uh, to work with Postgres in a Docker container or with Redis in a Docker container. Um, so uh, there are a few tools in um, Nix packages that will help me accomplish that goal. Um, unfortunately, uh, with Postgres, I can't. There, so Docker Tools has pull image and build image. Uh, there's also now build layered image. Um, the uh, place where um, it would want to put my extensions, uh, it wouldn't be able to be found with the Postgres in the base image from uh, just pulling the Postgres image, um, like the official library image. I could wrap it with a Postgres from um, Next Packages with the uh, patch for lib uh, pgdir. Um, but it's kind of awkward to do. There's like some nice shell scripts that the base library image has, and I didn't really want to commit them. So the practical side of me currently just uses a Docker file. Uh, I feel really bad about myself as a result, um, but I hope to improve. <laughs> uh, it, but I don't really know if there's a good way around doing this. Um, however, for Redis, oh, uh, sorry. So I have this horrible hack where I use rsync to pull out all my extensions, and then I put them in my docking container. Uh, and I really wish I didn't have to do that. Um, so just thought I'd share my shame with you. Uh, <laughs> so Redis on the other side. And um, I mean, if you look up uh, Docker tools in the um, Nix OS, uh, sorry, Nix packages manual, uh, Redis is actually the can canonical example, um, which is quite handy. Uh, so I essentially I just ripped that off. Um, and uh, if I want to load my module, um, the lib thing is a bit contrived. Uh, that's just where my uh, expression is installing it from my make file. Uh, probably I want to have a better place for it. Um, but yeah, it's simple enough. You just add a let Redis config in, and then your uh, uh, build image definition. Uh, and uh, yeah, you just load it up when your server starts. Uh, easy enough. Um, so now you know. Uh, it's still not great, though. Uh, cool thing though, all these tests I've written using um, temporary databases, I can now run them against the images I've built uh, with um, build image, etc., uh, or Docker if I'm feeling bad. Um, yeah, so uh, essentially I've, I've shown you the rsync thing. I'd like to find a better way to do that. The problem I'm, is I'm using uh, GitLab CI. Um, and it is not super compatible with Nix. Um, so there's a few issues. One, one thing that really irritates me is um, the Docker sock thing. So uh, it wants to um, have privileged access to that socket so that it can upload things to um, my Docker registry. But if I built my image with build image, I'm in my Nix runner. I don't have that access, so I essentially have to copy the tarball of my image into another runner, which then uh, loads the Docker image and then sends it to the registry, um, which is pretty annoying. Um, I think, well, wh what I would like to maybe spend some time doing is um, build like a Go tool that uh, t uses a bunch of the Docker things to just upload images. So it's just a tool that takes a tarball from build image and then um, you can just push it to an arbitrary registry if you have the credentials. Um, I don't know if something like that exists. If someone knows something about that, and they can come. Oh, Zimbatem has my back. Sorry, uh, tell me in a minute. Okay, Scorpio. Uh, so that would be really handy. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, hopefully, the problem is all my images for Redis are just one layer. Uh, hopefully, um, the build layered image would be helpful. Uh, but I haven't um, managed to integrate that yet into my pipeline. Uh, closing thought, I was reading Hacker News yesterday, and I like to base all of my life decisions on what random people are saying on Hacker News. Um, <laughs> someone was saying it would be good if uh, Postgres had a package manager for extensions. Um, maybe what I would like to see is the uh, ability to uh, manage extensions. Uh, when, when people think, oh, I'm going to manage my Postgres extensions, they think of next packages. Uh, Acknowledgement, Justin Wu helped me set up my slides, and I said I'd give him an acknowledgement. He has a cool repo showing you how to use uh, Nix packages to build stuff with Beamer. Uh, I, this is the point where I beg for Twitter follows. 
um, and also uh, this slides that you're watch reading now are uh, built and in the repo. Cool, uh, any questions or corrections? Are there any questions? Yes, there are. Are you aware of uh, this pull request by Todd Police that overhauls the PostgreSQL infrastructure index packages? I am not. That seems like something I should have known about before I gave this talk. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I am aware that uh, a lot of the Postgres extensions are written by him. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's some things that they do differently that I'm not sure about. So, for example, they won't use PGXS directly. They'll kind of copy the shared objects and SQL files. So, yeah. Uh, do you have the pull request number that I can? <laughs> cool. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else? No, then uh, another round of applause for this interesting talk. Thank you. Interesting is a good word. <laughs> <laughs>